Hello, my friends, and welcome to Studio Time with Mike. I am a music composer, producer, sound designer, and creative artist from Sweden, sharing my journey and adventure in music with you. I am so happy to have you here today on my live stream, and I hope that you will all have a great time watching, but I also want to really encourage you all to engage with each other in the chat, because it's more fun for us all if the chat is very active. So start discussions, ask questions, make friends and have a great time. I may be the host of this live stream, but you guys are the heroes of the community chat that makes it all much more entertaining, interesting and fun for everyone. Let's do this, my friends! Okay, so we are live today and um, well, welcome everyone. Uh, please introduce yourself in the chat, your name and where you are from. And today uh, the topic is to create uh, what I call a massive instrument chart because, you know, for those of you who were on my previous live streams, uh, I started building a massive instrument template here in my DAW, which is Logic. But I uh, came to like a realization that I first need to know, categorize what all the types of instruments, instruments really are, like the type of instrument and the range for every instrument. So um, today we are going to like build a massive category and I already started this, but I really want to hear your opinion about uh, this as well. because. Some instruments you can clump together in a specific category, while others, in my opinion, it's better to, you know, take them and separate them into another. For example, I have uh, thought about this woodwinds category here. I, uh, I actually separated it into winds and reeds, because uh, in the traditional orchestra, there... Uh, there is like woodwinds and the reed instruments like oboe, bassoon and stuff is um, in clarinet is in that woodwinds category. However, when I compose music, um, I really want to find the instrument um, that has the specific tone that I want. And I hear a huge difference between reed instruments and, you know, flutes, various types of flutes and those kinds of wind instruments. So, uh, just to check, can everyone hear me well? I, it looks in the broadcasting software that the microphone level is good. Um, and let's check so you can hear the actually, if I play something now, the piano here. And I haven't got any message yet in the chat. So I, can someone just write something? Uh, there, so I know that the stream is actually live, because when I don't see anything, it's like, wait a minute, am I actually live? Uh... Welcome everyone, so... Uh... Apple tips, if you have any like technical questions, please post them in the Facebook group for Logic. Uh... I want to do like, tech support on stream. Uh, let's see, Juan, hello, Joe Curtis, yes, we can hear you, good, okay, so, what I'm going to build is a massive instrument library here in Logic, so I already started, like, FX, but what types of instruments, instruments do I want, what categories do I want, so, for me, I'm uh, thinking something like this, this is just something I did uh, this morning, so, all type of keyboard instruments in keys, all types of strings, and bear with me here, strings, when I call them strings, I mean bowed strings, so any type of bowed strings, uh, brass, uh, so any, like, like trumpet, something that you, when you make um, the sound with your lips, because that's how a trumpet works, and horns, for example, uh, winds, and that, I found actually a cool uh, guide here on Wikipedia that we will follow this stream. Let me just have a sip of coffee. Alright, so, um, 
Here is actually a guide of all the various instruments, musical instruments and their subcategories according to Wikipedia. So for example, if you take a look at this, there is a category called aerophones. So they categorize this and then the subcategories here like free aerophones, um, pipe organs, whistles. Is it flute supposed to be here as well? I think so. Uh, now I don't find it. So basically any type of instruments that is making a sound by, you know, free flowing air is what I'm going to have in the winds category. So let's, uh, let's score. It's probably wrong, but, and voice, of course, I really want to separate the human vocals into, so that could be choirs, that could be, uh, you know, solo male vo vocals, solo uh, female vocals, just background, mms and os and stuff like that, anything like that. Let's remove those, so it's just for example here. And then plucks. Plucks is plucked strings. So remember what I told you, I'm going to have all bowed strings here and all plucked strings in here. So a huge uh, uh, separation there. So if you think about an acoustic or electric guitar, plucked strings, even harp, uh, Sither, Cantele, all these uh, strings that you pluck, lyre, I will put those in there. Then, uh, I don't know how you would do this, but I actually have mallets as a separated category. I'm thinking about, so I haven't uh, included any percussion here because I already did kind of the percussion in previous streams. So exclude all the, you know, drums from this instrument categories. But what about... Um, tune percussion so um, let's say by the way let's let's actually add do you hear any I, I want to have some background music while we while we talk here like that so it's a more cozy atmosphere so organs and pipe organs I'm not sure about and then there's the other aspect about reed instruments this annoys me. Can't I have this? What's the lowest volume I can have? Like that. Okay. Is that good level? I cannot have it any lower, it seems. Uh, so, reed instruments, like, for example, saxophone. I realized that there's two different uh, categories of reed instruments. So, the first one being uh, reed instruments that you shape the embouchure with your lips. So saxophone, clarinet, oboe, and then there's another one called free reeds. And that those are instruments that you blow uh, air in, so in some way, other with uh, like an accordion that you press with your hands like this, and then pushes air to the, uh, through a reed, but you don't shape it with your mouth. That's, that makes sense. So I have not decided yet. What do you think? Um... Let's actually just go in and start to add the subcategories. So I have, by the way, uh, electric is uh, not synthesizers, but for example, roads and electric in instruments. I'm not sure if I'm going to have that as a separate category. I might include it in keys, like electric keys. Hybrid is all kinds of, you know, mixture. You, sometimes you have presets which are a mix, a blend of an acoustic instrument and a synthesizer, for example, and stuff like that. And then, of course, uh, pure synthesized sounds. So if we do it like this, and then let's remove these and just put headings. Now we can start to add subcategories. So now we are going to make the massive instrument chart. Are you ready for this, guys and girls? So keys, of course, we have uh, piano. We have, um, so let's say we have both uh, grants and up right here then uh, for example uh, let's actually add organ let's do pipe organ in fact let's do celest celesta or celeste let's actually aerophones yeah exactly so let's google is it called celeste 
Mr. Chalista. Music instrument. Yeah, that's the keyboard part, okay? And we can, by the way, you can just open up uh, Omnisphere, for example, or Keyscape, actually, to see uh, what instruments we have available here. And if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the chat, because this is going to be a massive, massive, in only one instrument short. So what do we have? We have like bell tone keyboards. There's the cellist. Kimiatron, I never heard about that. Dulce tone. Toy piano. Let's see. Um, whoops. Let's go back. So toy piano. I guess we can put under this. Toy piano. Pipe organ. Celeste, Kimiatron. I I think I. I'm I'm not sure if I will use every single instrument ever created because that would be insane. So, if it's too uh, obscure, obscure, I will not add it. Dulce tone. Let's search for that. Dulce tone. What is that? Looks like this. Keyboard instrument which shall be used by uh, tuning forks. Okay, let's play the sound so you can hear it in action. Okay, well, very bell-like. Uh, toy piano, of course. Let's see, hybrid pianos, no, electric pianos. I think I will put those... I'm not sure if I'm going to put that... Piano, let's in fact add electric piano as its own. Electric piano. Let's actually make it a distinction here. Acoustic piano and electric piano. Then toy piano. Um, and let's see what else. Mini pianos. Plucked keyboards. What's this? Clavichord. Okay, so clavichord I uh, this might be the only library I have of them to be honest I have no idea let's put pipe organ at the top just because it's the biggest uh, you know of this clavichord let's do acoustic piano then harpsichord I don't know if uh, Omnisphere has any harpsichord or the keyscape harpsichord Electric harpsichord. That's interesting. Interesting. Electric harpsichord. I have never heard of that. If, if it might be unique, um, designed by uh, Spectrosonics, to be honest. Okay. Uh, I won't do an, uh, add an electric harpsichord here. Wind keyboards. Let's see what they have. Harmochord. <laughs> Um, I'm going to see if this if this is an actual category. Wind keyboards. And see what they have. They have. Okay, they classify melodica as a. So this is a free read instrument. I, I actually own a melodica. St just started playing, but um, you know. I'm not sure if I'm going to add the melodic into the keyboard. I'm probably going to add it to the actual reeds. Uh, it, because it still has that reed kind of sound. Oh, wait a minute. Why aren't you telling me? Someone please tell me in the chat. I, I forgot to, 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 uh, to do the picture in picture. So you haven't been able to see anything. <laughs> And no one says anything in the chat. You guys have to say if there's a problem, like technical issue in the stream. I mean, I'm, I mean I, I'm working here and you're supposed to see it. Oh, anyway, uh, let's get back into logic again. I'll load this up again. Okay, so we have... Can I just reduce this a bit? Like 
there, so we have both on the screen. Now we're okay. Harm chord, let's see, acoustic pianos, bell tone keyboard, so we have chillest, dulce tone. Wait, what's the chimetron? Like, it sounds like small church bells. Chimiatron. Uh, I'm going to try and see if that's a common, like... You never know with the Spectrasonics. Because they might have, you know, invented the instrument. Chimiatron. So they directly go to... Spectrasonics. Trademark. It seems to be a very unique kind of instrument, so let's not add that now. Alright, so we have pipe organ, acoustic piano, so that's grand and upright. Um, let's do this way. Electric piano, harpsichord, uh, toy piano, celeste. What was the final one here? Dulce tone. And that was dulce tone. Okay. Keyboard instruments, blah blah. Dilution, 1900. Okay. Seems to be fairly common at least. So let's add it there for now. Uh, harpsichord, dulce tone, toy piano. Let's have a sip of coffee. We need more energy. How are you guys today? What are you working on with your music journey? So I just got my new MacBook Pro and that's why I'm building this master template and you know this super instrument library in Logic. Uh, and I just realized I need to categorize every instrument because I actually also need to learn about them and this could be good for you guys as well. You, you need to learn how, what the range are, what the tone and mood is for every instrument. Is it a bass, a low, warm instrument? Is this in the alto range, soprano range? You know. Because uh, it will help you, I think, to, you know, lay your instruments better in the arrangement, what works together, uh, and all that stuff. Okay, so let's so let's leave it for there right now. If you can give a tip about more keyboard instruments, um, so in, let's, let's put electric keys, so I put like, those will be both electric organs and electric uh, pianos. I think I cover the essentials here, um, I hope. And then move on to strings. So bowed strings, let's go from the bottom, uh, let's try to go from the bottom and upwards like this. So we have the uh, beefiest uh, instrument at the top and then going to the lightest uh, instrument there. So let's start here, we have the double basses, we have the cellos of course, violas, and violins. So let's let's start actually with the uh, classical orchestral instruments there, the orchestral strings, and then move on. So I could come up with a couple more. Like I love this one, the Chinese erhu er, erhu. I don't know how to pronounce it. And um, I also came up with this. A actual I'm from Sweden, and this is a traditional Swedish instrument called tagelharpa or tar talharpa. Let's put it at the proper name. A very cool Viking type instrument. Also bowed strings. Um, there's also like, let's see, uh, bow. We have the medieval, I think, Rebex, is that the name? I have no idea about the Rebex. Bowed string and musical instrument of the European medieval and early Renaissance music. Yep. Uh, you can actually go in here and have a look just so you can see. Tuned, three strings tuned G, D, and A. Okay, let's add that. Rebex. Uh, any more? Any more bowed strings in string instruments? Because I, I might not have them in any sample library, but it's good to add at least all the more common ones used in soundtracks, cinematic music, you know, even like folk music. Um, otherwise, let's move on to brass. So here we have 
and this is a huge category. In fact, let me let me bring up. I actually did this. This was a really cool thing I started with. I'm actually not sure about the, but I I try to find the range uh, or the lowest note here. So I'm not certain. Oh yeah, the hurdy gurdy as well. Uh, so let's do it like this. Whoops. So you can see, this gets even more. Let's start that over. So here, who? Uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, um, Toggle Harpa. And of course, there are always plenty of variations of every instrument, but uh, this could give you a good, uh, you know, understanding of where it fits in the tonal range. So Toggle Harpa. I mean. There's no real standard tuning for it, because they can be different sizes. But, um, I mean, yes, you know, C1 is the lowest note on, on uh, bass, and C2 on cello, viola, C3, violin, G3, and so on. I just wanted to show you that, but I actually prepared something here. Then uh, the next one is brass, and I'm going to copy and paste all of these first, you can just uh, get a sense for the range as well. So going from contrabass trombone and contrabass tuba at A flat zero. I mean, that's low. That's really low. Uh, up all the way to piccolo trumpet, which starts as, at D4, so D above middle C. Right? So, uh, but I, I'm just, I did it to get a sense for the, you know, the respective ranges, so go from the lowest to the highest. So I will, won't use them here. I just want them because they, they I mean, there's bass trumpet. There, oh, the trumpet doesn't have to be B flat trumpet, of course. Um, there are different variations. But now you get a sense for it at least. Still going from contrabass trombone all the way up to piccolo trumpet. I think I did it for winds as well. Yeah. So I just started this, uh, so of course I need to add a lot of ones here. So starting from the bass recorder, there's of course sub-bass recorder and stuff like that, but you know, alto flute, flute, tenor recorder, low whistle in D, um, I mean alto recorder, pan flute, depending on size and tuning of course, piccolo flute, soprano recorder and uh, the traditional t t tin whistle in, in uh, D. Uh, should I actually put... Let's actually just put them in... Should I do that like that? I think so. Pickle Trump. Pickle Trump. Like that. What do you guys think? Is this a good way to like uh, properly categorize all instruments? Then we get to the voices. Um, so... Let's see, I'm going to I'm going to copy here as well. Like this is what I did for the voices. And so mixed choir is a, like a mixed preset of choirs, then male, female, children. So going from the lowest to the highest, and then lead male and lead female. Uh, I'm not sure if there is actually a lead children's choir or boys choir. Uh, 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 vocalist uh, library. It should probably go there then, if in that case. Now we're getting to the um, hard part here. So the reeds. I mean, you, you can see from the winds, I did not put woodwinds here. I actually put... These are all like various types of flutes, you could say, that I call winds. Uh, and the reeds I put in a separate category. This is very unorthodox. I mean, rebellic even of me, but I did that because, to me, reed has a certain sound. And this is what I'm not sure about, like, should I put the free reeds, as we learned about, um, where were they? We had them just now, like, uh, let's go to Google again. Like, free reed instruments list here. So free reed. You have accordions, reed organs, uh, let's see what this is, 
Why, why can't they just have... I, I need, uh, like, a, a proper list. That's what I want. Melodica, of course. I think... Isn't bagpipes? I think... Uh, now that I think about it... Let, let, let's read... Reads... Reads... What shall, shall I put it? Like... It's not drones, because it's not only drones. Let's put it at three first. Like that. What do you think? Is that a good category for this? And then, like, you have the... Uh, what do we have? Harmonica. Of course, higher. Let's put them down. Harmonica. Uh, melodica. And then you have... Accordion, um, what's that smaller one? Concert, cons, what's it called? Concertina, cons, uh, concertina is this one, a smaller one. Uh, concertina, but then I mean bagpipes, bagpipes, free read. I think so. Bagpipes, free read. Uh, for some reason, bagpipes are often described as free, described as free reed instruments. Whilst it would be by no means impossible to set up uh, free reed aerophones. So any type of reed instruments that you not have direct contact with your lips and mouth with a reed, I would categorize as this. I'm not sure if if that's the proper way to categorize it, but I would put it here right away. So let's do. Let's do it up here. Bag, pipes. Any more uh, of these types of free read instruments? I don't like that name because I really want an, a separate name from reeds. Something else for all this. Accordion, concertina, harmonica, melodica, which I own, bagpipes. Uh, shall I call them? But wait, pipes, instrument, piper instrument. No, there's this as well. Julian pipes. What's the difference here? Julian pipes classification: aerophone, wind, woodwind, bagpipe. So it's a type of bagpipe, I guess. So I won't put that in. And now that I think about it, I think there's a lot of bagpipes variations. Um, chanter, drone, okay, so I think, uh, blow reeds, no, what, what should we call them, pump, no, reeds free, let's put it at that for now, and then continue with the plaques. So all of these I will add as folders and subfolders in uh, the Logic library. Let's just show, me, show you here. I have in the traditional reeds, contra bassoon, the lowest, then bassoon, bass clarinet, tenor saxophone, alto saxophone, the, the B flat clarinet, um, soprano saxophone, oboe, shalomo, which is the um, Precursor to the uh, claret and then a uh, duduk. Okay. And I will remove these as well because I will put probably different versions. So let's do it like this soprano, tin whistle, low whistle, soprano whistle, soprano recorder. Auto recorder, let's see. Um, auto whistle, like that. Some of these I will probably just have as audio tracks anyway. I might actually not use the auto uh, soprano subfolders, I'm not sure. It gets very big if you do that. Because there's always variations in range for like all instrument types. Okay, so pluck, plucked instruments. Okay, so the most famous one is probably, oh well, at least in the orchestra, it's the harp, 
Then we have the acoustic guitar. Let's just let's just write guitar. We have the or shall I put electric guitar as its own? Uh, not sure. Uh, you, we have the ukulele. Uh, let's put that later. Let's do. What's all this? Uh, plucked string instrument. Let's see if they have a list. Here you. Mandolin, banjo, balalaika, sitar, pipa. Or Piper. Cantillo, this is a really cool instrument. I love the sound of it. Koto Guchin Gukin Gucheng. Uh Liar. Let's let's add a couple of these. I mean So Liar Ukulele Banjo What else is common? Mandolin Mandolin Cantele. Okay. Something like that. Let's see. Koto. Let's add Koto. Just because it sounds so nice. I think it's pretty big range as well. I just want to have a massive list of... What do you think about my top categories? So keyboards or keys as I call them. Strings which are bowed. Brass, winds, voice, reeds, reeds which are free, which are, you are not in contact with the reed with your mouth or lip. Uh, I think actually, let's put, just so you can understand it, one of the uh, most toy-like instruments ever created is a free reed instrument. The kazoo. Is that, is that the proper spelling? Kazoo. Yes, it is. Uh, it's categorized by them as a membranophone. I, they have so many different categorizations for instruments, to be honest. Um, I think I will not have it because no one really uses a kazoo in in music in you know, you know professional music. Um, okay, so let's continue with mallets. I think, didn't I have a mallet in here, in my... No, I haven't started that yet. Okay. Let's see what we can add. I think marimba is the one that goes the lowest on mallets. If I remember correctly, marimba. And then... Let's see, we have to actually check what we have in, for example... Let's do BBC Symphony Orchestra, okay. Um, I just want that interface open. And then just check, do they have mallets in here? They don't even have mallets. Do they? Student percussion, okay, here. I, I might put it at, as tube percussion now that I think about it, instead of mallets. Because like tubular bells is not mallets. But it is tune percussion. Or is it better to separate? Because you don't really play tubular, like melodies on tubular bells, but you can on these other ones. They actually have Celesti as a. Well, uh, well it is tune percussion, it's not mallets. Um, what do you think? Should we put it as the top category being tune percussion or mallets? Or separate them. I mean, what are, where are we? Celeste goes all the way down to C3. Okay, then we have, let's say, vibraphone. F3. Okay, that's a common one as well. Vibraphone. They put. I want to help you let's see how percussive it actually is. All 
what? I, I think um, it's it actually sounds very percussive, so I probably should put that. How far low well, did that go? So C3, and let's compare that to marimba. All the way to C2. Marimba, chill, chillest, uh, vibraphone. What about xylophone? It starts on F4, okay. Xylophone. Tuned. Tuned percussion. Actually, now that I think about it, let's put it at the top. Just because it's a percussive instrument, I I like to have the percussion at the top. Okay, what what else? Xylophone, vibraphone. I know that the uh, Cortales is really high. S start on C6, C6. Cortales. I am not sure if how low Glockenspiel goes, but I think Glockenspiel goes a bit lower. Crotales. Let's see, Glockenspiel. Uh, there. Goes from G5. Wh where did I say Crotales was? Oh, a bit higher, okay. And then uh, Tuber Bells, which is... Let's see. Tuber bells. Actually, I think I'm going to put that at the top, even though it's not the lowest, it's still, you know, you use it more sparingly the notes, you don't really play melodies on it, so, tune percussion. I'm, like, clumping all of these together, so it's both mallets and other, like, struck percussive instruments uh, that ring out like a percussion instrument. Okay, so uh, what else do we have here? Uh, we are down at the plaques. Harp, guitar. I'm still figuring out, should I keep... Should I have electric guitar in here or should I put... I think I should put it here actually. It's like... I'm still figuring this out. Like there, there's a lot of, lots of like, let's say Mellotron patches. You know, there's lots of these also electromechanical instruments, but I guess I could put those in like um, the keys category, like electric keys. I think. So let's see. In fact, let's let's define define these as acoustic guitar. Now that I think about it, and electric guitar, and then harp, and then all these other ones. Uh, liar. Yeah. Then we get into hybrid. Hybrid category where we have like. Uh, what should we have here? Should, or should I should I just use hybrid, and synth in the same category? What do you think? Um, tricky, tricky. D did I miss something here? Harp. They put harp as a tune percussion. I actually prefer to put it in the uh, pluck, plucked strings category myself, to be honest. These final ones are not, I mean, synths and hybrid sounds, they are hard to categorize because they can practically be anything. I mean, well, you know what? We do. We do it like this. Let's put up here the list here of all instrument categories and just check the logic library, the pre the stock sounds. So they have mallets here. They have Marimba. They have Toy Glockenspiel. Vibraphone. What did we, what did we have? We have what what is this? Um Vibes. Vibes? Okay, so now I actually loaded it. And you, you cannot see how it looks. 
vibes. Let's search for that. Vibes musical instrument. Is that like a logic specification? Vibes. May refer, refer to vibes, percussion, or vibraphone. Okay, so that's probably the vibraphone. Let's go back, check again. Keyboards, what do we have in the keyboards? Okay, so main synth stuff. Uh, mallet, orchestral. Okay, so brass. The French horn, full brass. Trumpets, tubas. Actually, now that I think about it. Strings. I think I will have a category here at the top of each one, like strings. Hello, Wesley! Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're doing something crazy, a bit crazy and unusual today. I'm actually like categorizing every single, you know, at least common musical instrument into top categories. And then, uh, you know, all these subcategories, the actual instruments here. So, uh, why am I doing this? Well, one thing is, I really want to learn more about what instruments there are to choose from. And also, like, what tone do they have? How do you play them? What are their respective uh, ranges? And so on. And then I'm going to use this knowledge, one, for my own compositions, but also to build a massive library here in Logic, so I can just load up, like, I need some strings. I can, I can add an erhu, erhu from China or an hurdy gurdy for perhaps. If we are, if we are going crazy, you better drive. <laughs> I'm taking care of that. Hopefully, we won't run off the road here completely. So, uh, Wesley, since you are in the chat now, uh, there's not so much engagement so far. I mean, what do you think about my, about my top categories? I don't know if you are like knowledgeable in how instruments are categorized because there are some, you know, proper classifications like um, if you check here Wikipedia they have like aerophones for example, membranophones, like scientific names for it all, ideophones. I'm doing a bit of a mix personally because to me the most important thing is the tone of the instrument, you know, the characteristics of the, how it sounds how it works in practice, uh, for example, per a percussive sound is very different, even if, even if it's a, you know chromatic tuned percussion compared to long sustain, and also what range it is in. So I have at the top, I haven't categorized any drums yet, so this is only any pitched instrument. Tuned percussion, uh, keys, various keyboard based instruments, Strings, which are all the bowed strings. Brass, which are, well, all the brass instruments. Um, I mean, then we have winds. And this is a, a bit rebellic of me. Instead of having classic woodwinds as a category, I always found there's a huge difference in tonal quality between wind instruments, basically that any type of instrument that the you basically forcing air and then it, it through a tube of some kind or a body and then uh, it, it vibrates the air inside that column so basically flutes various types of flutes it could be yeah ocarinas and stuff ocarina well let's see let's see Ocarina. I, let's let's put it at. Uh, I think it's fairly high. Let's put it above pan flute here. Ocarina. Uh, the crazy part comes when I think about where should I put all the ranges because there's of of course there is a soprano, alto, bass, and so on version like of every instrument. Let's see, Wesley, knowledgeable of categorical listing. My last twelve months. I have not experienced any use of my dear blood. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. So I'm not the I'm not the only nerdy person um, in here right now, because I know some people don't even have a you know category listing of their instruments and just go to their internal banks in contact and stuff. I really want to have all the almost like logic has. Like, if we go in here, why can't I go back? 
But this is a crappy categorization in my opinion. I want to have it so that I can reach for, you know, I need, I need a tuned percussive instrument. Okay, let's see. I have tuned percussion. Okay, I need a fairly low one, so marimba. And by the way, in case you haven't seen so, I am trying to put it pretty much on a low to high range. Uh, or, or beefy to thin, if you can say that. So like tubular bells, it might no go to the, uh, be the lowest root note, but I put it at the bottom because in most cases it's just that background gong type bell sound. Then marimba, uh, to my knowledge, that is the lowest um, range mallet instrument. Uh, I put celeste here, vibraphone, all the way up to crotalis, which uh, I th believe is the highest, you know, tune percussion instrument. One cannot build a rooftop first, the foundation must be built. Exactly, that's why I haven't, it's my like fifth or sixth live stream, and I haven't even started making any music yet because I really want to nail this. And to be honest, you are probably way more knowledgeable than uh, I am in, within like the how you categorize instruments and how they work. I have never like. Um, composed for an actual live orchestra or live instruments like that. I only composed for sample libraries, so I am at a disadvantage unless I actually spend some time learning how instruments work. So when I categorize, for example, the reed category, uh, let me just go down here to the, well, the brass category, for example. And I'm used to, like, I'm playing my flutes now, so I, I'm used to, like, I have a bell note. I can literally not go lower than that. And some of these, you know, brass instruments, they don't even have a set lowest note. So, of course, very few instruments have a set higher note, as you know, but they don't even have a set lowest note, which makes it really hard to you know, put to put it down like the the range for every instrument, because first they can be different versions, of course, like a B flat trumpet or a C trumpet, but they can also have, depending on the player, be able to play lower. I, I don't really know, uh, to be honest, how brass instruments work. I have to be really honest here. Because I thought that like like a flute, that if you leave a... Uh, you know, it, it depends on, on how you cover the holes, and you always have a bell note, a root note. But that might not be true, according to my readings on Wikipedia at least. <laughs> because I tried to find, you know, what's the, what's the uh, note range for a tuba, for example. And then I go to Vienna Symphonic Library and check their range. And it's a bit different range from another. And I'm talking I'm still talking concert pitch here. Um, it's not like the comparing the written range and the concert pitch. It's so that makes it really tricky for me at least to categorize um, and you know structure every individual section. Instrument ranges should be memorized like memorizing an alphabet. That's my aim. Uh, I still have a long way to go because uh, right now I'm still like, you know, bass, trombone, and trombone. I, I think I put this in the right order at least, but I still don't know the proper range. Some instruments have more set ranges, like let's say the string section, you know. Here uh, I've learned like C, C1, C2. I, I, I always talk about concert pitch, by the way. I can do that because I don't write for, you know, live ensembles. Uh, and my brain works better. I'm a former programmer, so I, I really like things to be, have a set system. So, you know, C1, C2, uh, what is it? Uh, C3 and G4? I'm a, uh, no. No, no, no. G G3. So th those are pretty set. But I mean, some instruments, like let's say hurdy gurdy, there are so many different variations of them. I guess most of the orchestral instruments have uh, been dialed down over the years to, to, to make it a standard for the tuning, especially the string section, I guess. But uh, brass, much more variation in tones. So I just put some example like bass, trumpet in B flat, trumpet. B to my knowledge, for brass instruments, B flat is a very common version 
on trumpets, for example, horns in F, and then you get to the winds. And here I was a rebel once again. I actually took out all the reed woodwinds and put them in a separate reed category. And this is just because I prefer it this way. I find that reed instrument has such a different characteristic tone compared to uh, wind instruments, which are all these types of flutes, like recorders, classical flutes, tin, tin whistles, and so on. Let's see. Didn't I put in ocarina? Let's see. I, I'm, I'm going to add um, bansuri. Just a couple of variations here. Still, I'm still figuring this out if I should have like soprano. Do you have a, a category, um, instrument category like this, Wesley? Have you made your user patches, your own library for every instrument section? Or am I just going too way overboard with this? Let's remove that for now. I'm actually going to remove these just because I will I want to put I will put the C trumpets and B flat trumpets in the same as trumpet and then you know just categorize according to you know their range so bass trumpet versus trumpet versus piccolo trumpet um, then we have um, the wind so I put the recorders the flutes as you can see alto flute wait a minute I need to put bass flute in there uh, for the voices, I categorize like mixed choir, male choir, female choir, children, and then lead male and female. So I just want to go in, grab, I need a voice, well, a mixed choir, let's say, and then put it in there. And then this was another rebellic thing about uh, I did, which was to create another category which I call reads and uh, free in parentheses. Why? Well, because they are actually creating a sound with a read. But you are not in direct contact with your lips. You, you don't create the embouchure. Um, you just blow air into it or press air like a, a accordion. So accordions, or concertinas, harmonicas, melodicas, which is the only reed instrument I own, and all types of bagpipes I put in this. Because it's a different tone to me, to my ears, than uh, proper reeds like bassoons. Uh, saxophones, oboe, even duduk, which I wish I will, I'm going to learn someday because that's my favorite reed instrument in the world, the duduk. Just has that warm, haunting sound, mysterious vibe. And now we are uh, in the final uh, category here. The plucks is all strings that are plucked as opposed to bowed. I mean, you can of course pluck a cello, but traditionally you play it with a bow. Uh, um, let's see, not for every instrument, and please go way overboard, very useful in handful teaching later when planning a large orchestral composition, arranging shall become intuitive. That's what I hope, at least. Uh, I mean, not only will it be easier for me to compose and find the instruments, I'm also considering, you know, adding... I will probably not have, like, soprano saxophone, alto saxophone, like this, I would probably put them in, let's say, like this, low, um, uh, the reed is the top category, and then I will probably, I, I won't use like alt or tin, or I will simplify it like this, like all the low reeds, all the mid-range reeds, and all the high-range reeds, if that makes sense. And then, you know, so I get like a proper structure, like a tree, basically, of categories and subcategories. So uh, if I need a reed instrument that is high in pitch, uh, I might go to, let's say, reeds here and put, uh, let's say, harmonica, because that's a very high range. Intuitive rather than half hazard guesswork disguising itself as improvisation. Uh, let's see, what did you write before? Uh, range shall become intuitive, yeah. And in the process, I'm learning lots of stuff as well. I mean, when I started doing this, I went to Wikipedia. And I just search for different in musical instrument types, how they categorize them. I mean, if you check aerophones here, 
they use this Hornbostel sax system. Uh, I, I I don't know who that is, the person who made it, Eric Moritz von Hornbostel and Kurt Sachs, but I mean, there are already scientific categorizations for all of this. Um, I just, for me personally, I'm using that this as the foundation, and then I separate it based more on personal choice. That is why I separate like reads and reads free, for example. Um, it makes sense personally. The saxophone is the most developed sound that I know. No effective articulation sample ever. Yeah, which is why I put it on the bucket list. Like someday, I really want to learn to play the saxophone. I will probably start with uh, a cheaper reed instrument like the Chalamo, um, which is also easier for me, I think, because I already learned to play these open hole flutes. Let's say, like the tin whistles, for example and I will add a recorder eventually and it's also very low maintenance because there's no um, what's it called pads uh, you just cover the holes so yeah I agree saxophone basically the reason I started playing the flutes uh, Native American flutes and all these you know uh, aerophones is or solo instruments is I al al always play the keyboard over the years the downside with the keyboard and piano is that there is no real way to... It's great for mock-up, sketching, and playing sample libraries and stuff, but it's no good for expressive solo performances. So legato, glides and bends, vibrato... You cannot do it on a keyboard instrument. And that's where the solo instruments shine. So saxophone is one of those like top expressive instruments in the world to my ears and super that's why it sounds so synthy and static and you know there are as you say no good sample libraries yet for saxophone i searched uh, it's the same for all uh, all of these solo instruments but solo reed instrument in particular the saxophone the duduk i haven't found anything that sounds good in that category um well let's continue where are we uh plucks so i started with the um, classical ones the most uh, common ones acoustic guitar electric guitar harp of course koto banjo mandolin cantile lyre ukulele I mean, you can you can go on. Plucked strings is probably plucked strings and various types of flutes. I would imagine are the two most common instrument types in the world. There are probably hundreds, if not uh, if not thousands of variations. An extreme high level of expression and articulation on saxophone. Have you have you actually played uh, any of uh, these instruments personally? Do you play anything like an acoustic instrument? I just started my journey, as you've seen on YouTube. So I've learned the tin whistle and the low whistles. I've learned the Native American flutes. I'm learning the Irish bouzouki back there. And uh, I haven't really yet started on the hybrid bow, bowed stringed instrument yet. But what I'm lacking right now is because I really want to have at least some skills in the various types of instruments. So plucks and strums, basically, the bouzouki, uh, the free ranging or the fr free range? Talking, talk We're not talking about hens here or chickens. Uh, the reeds, I have a melodica. I don't have any proper reed instruments like a saxophone, anything yet, yet there. So I want an alto saxophone. Uh, Aaron, welcome. Oh, you're learning trumpet. Uh, I don't have a brass instrument and prop I'm not sure if I can get one because I'm living in a rental apartment. I mean, I think brass instruments are even louder than saxophones. I can get away with these flutes and stuff because they... Are, well, the tin whistle can be loud, but it's so high in pitch that most of it, the energy dies off. Uh, between the walls to the uh, to the neighbors uh let's see personally wesley on saxophone over a week period in college i borrowed the saxophone to try learning the d scale 
Okay, wh why didn't you keep that up then? I really, re I'm principally piano. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not a good piano player by any means. I learned keyboard mainly to become a music composer. But now it's only like this past year I realized that I really love playing an acoustic instrument. You can get so much emotion in even a simple instrument like the Irish uh, whistles. Even a diatonic instrument. It's something, It's it, you can feel it like in, in your soul when you play. Uh, I, I can't describe it any better than that, to be honest. Guitar knowledge and experience, but not, but it's not a passion. Yeah, so plucked instruments is a, n a different thing as well. Like, because um, there's two. Now that I think about it, Shh. ah, uh, Wesley, you just made me realize another thing. Uh, so, as you see here, I separated reeds with what I call free reeds. Um, let's actually do. Let's separate. This might be odd. But wait, well, I'm, I'm thinking here because there's two variations of plucked string instruments to, to at least what I uh, think here. Um, how should I explain this? So, you know, the Irish bazooki back there, you play mainly strumming chords, right? And it has a fretboard. Harp does not have a fretboard. Lyre has do doesn't have a fretboard. So I will call them, let's say, plux free <laughs> or non fretted, but I like this. Uh, or uh, let's do it like this then. Or, or even like frets and plux. And I can put, uh, let's see, cut those out and put. Acoustic guitar, electric guitar. What what else did we have? We have the banjo, the mandolin here, of course, under the fretted ukulele as well. You just made me realize that when you talked about uh, guitars. Um, I mean, I could go on and on, of course, in this plucked instrument. Plax, plucked is a better name. I prefer plucking guitar. Ah, okay. Uh, you you know what? Th this might sound so strange because uh, let me let me grab the. I don't know if you can hear this good. It's not in tune, so this might sound crazy. When you say that, most people that start acoustic guitar, I would compare a, a bazooki to an acoustic. It, it's the same, you know. Let's see if I can you can you hear this at all? No, I'm plucking one uh, string at a time. So I, I am very unusual. I have realized because most people that start playing guitar or bassoon or any you know fretted string instrument, they have a way easier time to start playing rhythms and chords like. I haven't played this uh, much, so I haven't learned it well. The strange thing about me, I have realized, is that I have had a way easier time learning to play melodies. So plucking, doing slides. I mean, I can play melodies way better on a plucked string instrument like this. And then when I start to strum, Damn it, your headphone cable is all over the, all over the place. Uh, when I start to strum, I have difficult. I I don't know if it's because I'm a keyboard player, but I have a hard time finding chord patterns on any plucked. I tried acoustic guitar back in the days. Like, what am I supposed to press that fret and that fret? And, uh, then I thought it would be easier when I bought the bazooki and I tuned it in uh, G D A. Let's see, what is it? D, D, A, D. Which means that if I play a, a bar like this, um, I don't have to remember anything because that it is a sus too. I can play. 
of course you cannot only play sus 2 chords so then i've learned that you can play okay so this is a wait a minute this is a major so it's an easy way to get around the fretboard like this minor and sus 4 however even though I, uh, it's easy now for me to learn the patterns because i only play bar chords i cannot do it because it's so hard for me to press down all these bar chords so i i get these annoying um mutes and uh, noises so i basically never play rhythm because i have a hard time doing it <coughs> so very pleasant <clears throat> okay i need to take a sip of coffee thank you wesley um because most people prefer to play chords i can just put this back here again whereas i I am not sure if I ever would be able to play rhythm guitar or rhythm bouzouki. Are you building templates? I would think some out of your skill and dedication to do it. I have, but that's the thing. I'm starting from scratch with my new MacBook Pro that I got like um, in December. So I'm building a brand new. I will build a completely new template in Logic this year. Completely new instrument library. I just wanted to start from, start from scratch this time. I even uh, scrapped, I mean not deleted by put on backup drives uh disk drives like 90 percent of my sample libraries because i i was really hard on myself like am i really using this sample library or this plugin whatever because one of the downsides with collecting all these sounds and instrument libraries over the years is it's so easy to get overwhelmed if you have a gazillion choices for every instrument. It might seem like a good thing, but it's really not. Uh, for example, let's say synthesizers. I know synthesizers very well. I grew up with synthesizers. Uh, I consider myself uh, very knowledgeable in how synthesizers work. So I already know that there's not much. It's all based on waveforms or oscillators that uh, have a specific waveform and that you sculpt with envelopes and LFOs and you know everything so I don't want to join the the you know the the train uh, of every person that checks out the new synthesizers on the market I'm still you going to Omnisphere as my main choice because it has it all and I want to have that for uh, well I have like Omnisphere and Diva. Th those are basically the only two synthesizers I use. And I want to have that same choice for every instrument category. That Does that make sense? I don't want to have 4,000 different violin uh, presets. I just want to have perhaps two or three of the best sounding ones that I prefer, are playable, uh, nice amount of articulations, and all, uh, all that stuff. Let's see, Wesley. Um, New, new MacBook Pro. Okay, so Wesley, what I did is I had my... I don't know if you can see it. It's My old iMac is still up there as a backup computer, basically. You can see the bottom of it, I think, here. That one I had since 2014. It's a 2013 model. Uh, that's what... That's, that computer has been with me, and uh, it became almost impossible to do anything on it because it's so old so then in 2020 apple announced like uh we we are going to build new cpus and i realized straight away this is the future probably intel and amd and everyone else will follow suit like this arm processor i don't know how how techy you are wesley or anyone else here in here but i mean it's the x86 standard has been with us for like so many decades and going in a completely new direction which is more energy efficient um, is probably the way to go so i was on the verge of on buying a new imac in 2020 and then they had th that announcement like we are going to change our entire range of macs to this new chip so what i would have wanted was actually a mac pro you know the, i want a computer that will uh 
you know, I can use for eight, nine, or ten years. But I don't want to buy the old Intel Mac Pro, so I just wanted this, what do you call it, a step uh, gap solution. Which is why I didn't went all in on this MacBook Pro. This is just, I will buy the Mac Pro when that comes out, probably in December this year. I just need something that is good enough now, because that iMac is crap. So what I did was I bought the uh, lowest uh, model of the 14-inch MacBook Pro. You cannot see it, it's right here. Um, but I upgraded the RAM to 32 gigabytes. And I didn't put any big SSD inside it because I went for the external, you know, SSD. I wanted to have a lot of external SSDs. So that is the computer I'm using. It will definitely be uh, working for me at least for this year. Welcome, Tateshe, back to the stream. Uh, what are we doing here today? Well, we are building, I'm actually creating a instrument chart, basically. I'm categorizing because I um, I started building the ma master template, as you remember in the previous stream, but I came to like a, a point where I needed to, for myself, categorize everything first, because otherwise I would have ended up with chaos. So, I will have top categories for the sound or instrument types according to my own definition. You can come up with your own definition. You can use anything you want, but I want to categorize it in, in a way that makes sense to me. So this is what we have. Uh, Tateshi, I assume you just tuned in. The top categories and then the subcategories or so instrument types of every category. Tuned percussion, like mallets or tuned... Uh, you know, plates and tuned drum. Oh, not tuned drums. Uh, or should I actually put timpani in here? Hmm. No, I will keep timpani as a drum. Uh, yeah, thank you, Tateshi. So why am I doing this? Well, one, to have this category for myself as a way to differentiate various t types of instruments according to how they produce the sound. Tune percussion, keyboard instruments, uh, strings, which are bowed strings. So we have everything from you know, orchestral cellos here to hurdy-gurdies. All brass instruments. I'm not sure if there are any more than these ones, like the trombone family, the tuba family, the horn family, and the trumpet family. But to my knowledge, all the brass instruments is you, you, they, I think all of them are made from the actual metal brass material, but you produce them by like vibrating your lips. I think I have never played a trumpet or anything, but I think you like. I don't even know how to produce that sound, but that type of sound gets a certain tone. So all these horns or brass instruments have their specific tone. Then I separated the woodwinds into winds and reeds. Usually, you know, clarinets are woodwinds, but I think, to me, to my ears, they have such a different tone. So I separated, wait a minute, why did I do this? Voice should not be there. Into winds uh, and reeds. So reeds you will find the saxophone, the clarinet, oboe, even duduk. Any type of <clears throat> single reed and uh, a double reed here. Let's see, I just want to put down voices. Then I separated the reeds as well into reeds that you form the shape, the sound with embouchure with your lips and mouth, like clarinet, saxophone, and free reeds, which basically you never shape the sound with your mouth, like accordion, you use your hands, concertinas, harmonica. You never actually touch the reed with your lips. Melodica and so on. Let's see, I'm gonna try and add that here. Um, finally, here we had get into the plucked strings, which I separated just now from uh, talking with Wesley here, into fretted uh, plucked strings, which you can also, also strum, of course, like acoustic guitar, electric guitar, banjo, mandolin, ukulele, and then plucked strings, uh, I just call them plucked, which are 
doesn't have frets, a fretboard, but, uh, but have like, you know, free... And this is a good thing because... Let's see, some of these instruments, now that I realize it, you can separate it even further if you wanted to. Like Horp, it's, it, 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 they have... Um, um, what's it called? What's it called? When you, when you have a fretboard but no frets, when you have a, you know, uh, let's say th there are actual uh, guitars with, which doesn't have a fret, almost like a violin, so you can pluck the string but you can, you know, uh, glide your fingers and create different tones, whereas harp, of course, there is a specific string that's totally open. Uh, I'm probably just rambling now. But I hope you know what I mean. There's actually a separation between. So let's let's say um, I think there is a Chinese instrument. What's it called? Gua Cheng. Gua Cheng. What's it called? Gu Gu Cheng. Oh, what's it called? Instrument. They can pluck the string. Here it is. Gu Cheng. Uh, so what I mean is that you can actually shape the sound. You, you don't even have to do it on the fret, I guess. You can just glide your fingers. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking hard about this. Should I separate it into... So what I mean, let me show you what I mean. Let me bring my bazooka again. Can you hear me over from here? So. If I play a harp, I just pluck it with a finger or fingernail or something, and, and then it will ring out, right? And then if I want a different note, I go to another string. Okay? okay? Are you following me here? So that is one type of plucked string instrument without fret, uh, any frets. But then there are other plucked strings where you can start on a note and then glide. Without the frets, it will glide completely naturally. You don't do it on a harp or a lyre or anything like that, but you do it on fretless plucked stringed instruments. And I'm trying to find if I should add a category for that as well. There are pro probably no good sample libraries for it anyway, because all of these instruments, especially fretless ones, you really need to play live, uh, to be honest. Okay, so I'm glad you follow me, Wesley, because I am personally feeling that my mind is already in a chaotic state right now. I'm just... It, this is basically... What I'm doing right now is brainstorming with you guys. <laughs> Tateshi, you mentioned in the previous stream yesterday, we talked about uh, some Japanese and Chinese, you know... A, East Asian uh, string instruments. I don't even remember the names. Yeah, I haven't actually added drums yet. I think I will save that for last. I have tune percussion. Um, but I will probably add those drums in another stream. They are so particular. I consider it like non-tuned percussion as probably the biggest category of musical instruments in the world. You can go so deep in that. So let's not start that today. You are thinkering. Tinkering. I am. I am really... So, I mean, fretted strings, plucked strings, what should I call them? F let's, let's call them fretless. I may be going overboard, as I always do. Why am I like this? I'm... I just know myself. I, I'm the personality type that goes... Always go all in and overboard with everything I do. Which is... Which can be... It's like a double-edged sword. Because... Uh, I... It gets... You, you kind of get naturally into perfectionist mode. However, at least you do things well when you do them. It just takes longer. Uh, MVM, uh, welcome to the stream. 
Tateshi, you remember what we talked about yesterday in the last stream? Uh, we, we, we talked about different icons for string instruments and I think you were the one who, who told me like what these are. I mean, I can see that is Erhu. I don't know what these were. If you can help me figure that stuff out. Let's open up this again. I, thi I think this one, this Gucheng, is a fretless plucked string instrument. No. Good chain. <laughs> Let's see. Wesley, for beginners, the primary Western orchestra is the place to start, but of course, at an intermediate discovery level, the sheer quantity of instruments is so vast. Well yeah. I mean, there's thousands of instruments, and. I. I probably. I'm, I'm just thinking now. Probably it's like this. Percussion, drums and percussion is by far, by far the most common category. I don't know if you see this at all. Then probably uh, what I think is flute is because that's the first pitched instrument ever. It's like you can find flutes made of bone in like uh, stone age, you know, fossils from the from the back way back. Uh, so I would imagine there is thousands of drums and percussion instruments in the world probably at least hundreds of variations of flutes i mean every culture have like 10 different ones it seems yeah but let's see uh tateshi good good queen so good cheng is another one right am i am i thinking correctly here that the good cheng good cheng plucked then we have cedar Let's see, even maestros such as Bar Baron Boim have no mastery on them. I don't know who that is, but I, I guess, I mean, no one really masters them all. Not even masters the knowledge of how everything works, but at least I want to get the, you know, bird's eye overview of all the instrument categories, even if I don't know them well having like a the foundation found the foundational knowledge of every type will benefit me a lot i think yeah you mentioned good queen what was that that was good queen plucked strings do you know these uh, types of instruments personally tateshi because what i'm trying to find now are any type of threatless string instrument meaning a, a instrument that you pluck with your fingers and or a pick or something but you play it more like you glide your fingers in between notes and i think this is very common in uh, east asian music so like chinese music for example uh, i personally love that tone and i have not found a sample library that can properly you know express all those uh, glides well Daniel Barenboim, Bar Barenboim, former conductor of Chicago Symphony Orchestra, now in Europe conducting at times all the major Europe European orchestra. Oh, wow. Yeah, as a conductor, I imagine you at least have proper knowledge of all the standard Western orchestral instruments. But as you, as you said previously here, there are thousands more. I have played Koto several times. Nice. Uh, this to me looks like... Cedar. Let's see. Cedar. Thus, the instrument is called Gukin today. I see. Um, I mean, look at this nerdy scientific classification. The Horn Bostel Sax classification 312.22 Heterochord Half Tube Cedar. I. I was a science major. I find these nerdy, you know, insights so fun to, to learn. Developed in the first millennium BC or earlier. Um, let, let me just search for fretless string 
in musical instruments and see if we can get a list of all them. Fretless guitar, fretless, fretless. I mean, of course, of course, the violin, you know, that that section is fretless. But I'm talking about fretless stringed instruments that you pluck, that not bowed fretless instruments. Let's see. Queen versus sauce. They are. They both are koto. You know. You know what I need to do? I actually need to go to YouTube. I will leave the background music now and it's like Koto example. How do you play Koto? Koto. Let's see. Can we just increase the volume? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> play it! Do you Let's always see. tune? I guess having perfect. Do you play. Do you slide uh, your fingers? Sure. Five. Give me an example. <laughs> Sound example. <clears throat> Tateshi, do you know any more of these types of string instruments? Sound test here, please. Okay, they they played more like a harp. It's fretless, yeah, but do they play? I might be getting overboard with this. Should I should I just keep them as plucked everything in here? I'm just thinking that it could be good to separate I mean on a harp you don't glide between the pluck. When you pluck a string it's that note, right? I'm trying to find what instruments you pluck but then you glide. Tateshi all, all those instruments, and I, it, it might be that they are, you know, they are the most common in the Chinese uh, instrument family or the East Asian family of instruments. Of course, there are fretless bass guitars, for example, but uh, now that I think about it, fretless bass, let's start with that. Fretless bass, okay. Just because you pluck it. Don't glide, but you can bend. Oh, Wesley, yeah, you, you're using uh, East West. Are you on the new Opus edition? I, I have trouble installing that on my new computer for some reason. It's not completely yet compatible, it seems, with uh, uh, you know all of the sample libraries. Uh, if if you are considering upgrading to the new Mac. Just think about that. You sent it to uh, all your piano concerts. Oh, okay. Nice, congratulations. Good change, sound examples. Good change. Um. You know what? Fretless, hot plucked. Uh, your instructions here today go for well. I'm I don't I, I'm actually trying to figure all this stuff for myself. So I guess my my own learning journey into categorization and this stuff and how the instruments work. Hopefully can benefit some of you as well. Obviously, Wesley, I, I'm sure you have way more knowledge about How all these different instruments work, especially if you if you worked so long uh, as a composer but uh, We are all part of this Journey this learning journey and regardless of where we are if you are a complete beginner or a professional There's always more to explore. That's the fun thing about music more instruments, more uh, variations, more everything, more uh, types of parts of the world. As you, I think you mentioned something about Africa. I mean, they have so many interesting uh, percussive instruments, all, all from you know 
the drums to kalimbas and tune percussion. There's always more to learn. Let's see, fretless. Um, just thinking, because I actually consider buy considered buying a fretless instrument myself. Have you ever seen? There's a, a smaller version of a bass, which is actually a bass ukulele. I have thought about in the future uh, buying a bass ukulele, which is fretless. Or a fretless bass guitar, I, I haven't uh, made up my mind yet, but I always wanted to have that freedom of being able to glide, do a proper glissando after I pluck a string. Infinite instruments, infinite possibilities, infinite things to learn. Exactly, Tateshi, that's what I mean. Right now, I'm still considering if I just should... So, fretted instruments and then plucked. I think for now, I cannot really come up with uh, enough of the fretless versions. So I will put those uh, here. So, let's do the Gucheng. Uh, let's put the Scyther here. What did you say? Guquin? Guquin? I'm not sure about the proper order. I like to keep it like at least fairly well organized as the lower ranges at the top and the higher ranges at the bottom. Let's just go through what we have. So we have the tune percussion, keyboard instruments. What am I missing? Let's call them plucked instruments. Yeah, I. I I started with plucked in instruments, Tateshi, but I actually, uh, when uh, when Wesley talked about uh, acoustic guitar, that he plays that a bit, I just had like a lightning uh, bolts in in my mind, like wait a minute, there's frets and there's non frets, so I separated them into fretless strings, so I just call them frets, acoustic guitar. Electric guitar, banjo, mandolin, ukulele, what else? I mean, there's so much in here um, from various parts of the world as well. I'm still thinking way too much as a Westerner. I mean, these are still mainly Western instruments. There's so many fretted uh, stringed instruments that I don't even know about. I mean, okay, so there's all... Let's add a couple of them. Like, uh, I love this uh, Eastern or... Uh, Middle Eastern instruments like oh this is one of my favorites. Let's put it after electric guitar. I this is probably this is fretless by the way. The oud. I lo I love the oud. I would love to learn that. I would probably never do it because it's super hard to play fretless. Uh, and then they ha they have also should I put it? I think I will put it further down because it's. A world instrument or ethnic instrument and then this one sass also really cool middle east and uh, soul soul trip satry how do you pronounce that let me check what it is bold so soul tree soul tree improvisation i just want to see how it sounds ah Wait a minute, how, what's the difference between a cantele looks kind of the same? Cantele... Cantele and psaltery. Let me copy that and add it. Let's see. So that is here. Cantele... Psalt... Psalt... Did I spell it correctly? Psaltery, okay, psaltery. I'm sorry if I maim all the names here with the pronunciations. <laughs> Probably you don't you don't say the p right? Psaltery. Guitar, guitar lele. Is that a mix of a ukulele and a guitar, Tateshi? Guitar Lele. Is it similar in sound as a, like, let's say, baritone ukulele? 
Oh, don't shimmer. Let's see, that is quite common. Oh yeah, the Dulcimer. It has frets. How do you usually play it? You play it in your lap, like this? I just want to see how you play it. Oh, nice! So it's a plucked instrument. It is kind of like fretted. Oh yeah, the lute as well. Let's see, where, where should we put the Dulcimer? Put it here, I guess. To shimmer because it has frets. And the lute, isn't that like the precursor to the guitar, right? It is. So let's put that in here as well. Lute. I mean, of course, we could go on and on. There's probably like thousands of frets fretted uh, instruments uh, we w we don't want to go into every single one ever created because I would never find an instrument when I start to make music kind of middle size Gu the guitar lily uh, yeah I, I th let's um, let's listen to the guitar lily guitar lily here sound example come on Play! It's like it's like a small guitar, it's still six strings. Bend your lid! <laughs> I mean, as you, as, as you start to add these examples, I feel more and more that it's so many instruments to learn. You mentioned another one, uh, the charango. I think I saw that in um, that new orchestral tools library. How common is that? It's like a Latin American. It's small. It's a ukulele size. How does it sound? Sound examples. But there's many strings. I assume this five times two, so double stringed. Uh, let's see. Now the ins now the royal three. Background music stopped. MVM, Fado Guitarra is a very unique instrument. Oh, I have never heard about that. I'm considering if I should add... Hmm. Charango. Let's add it for now. Um... Let's see, firstly, let me backtrack. As I came in mid lesson, is this a new feature in Logic? It's not a new feature, but uh, I don't think so. Uh, I've used it at least two or three years, but very few people actually know about it. So let me just quickly show you what it is, uh, Wesley. What it is is, when you press this library here, unless you haven't... Ha if you haven't made uh, or saved your own instrument patch ever, you won't see user patches up here. You will only see the stock sounds, which we all know suck. It, they are bad. What you want to do is load up, let's say, orchestral tools, whatever instrument you want here. Uh, let's say this one here. What do we have here? We have uh, Cinematic Studio Woodwinds, okay? This is Contrabassoon. Oh, all right. Then you save it. And that will go into the instrument folder, which is buried somewhere down deep in your Macintosh uh, operating system, like Mac... Uh, well, I don't know, can I see where it is actually? It's buried super deep, so you have to actually go in and find it yourself. So I have it here, open in... Where is it? Open in Finder, you should supposed to get info. Macintosh 80 users, and then your username, music, audio apps, patches. I know. I don't know why they hit it so deep. But then you can create these subcategories, your folders, and then you can just create subfolders, and then you can of course save your actual patch. That way, so we can just start with this, uh, Wesley. I haven't added all of this yet, I'm still categorizing. These will be top folders, let's say plucked, and then under plucked, there will be a subfolder called harp 
and then I will save my favorite harp sample libraries. So let's say, let's say I have, let's say I like this one. Okay, so I removed it there. So, so BBC Symphony Orchestra. Let's say I, I love that harp. I can save it, go to user patches, go to, let's see. Um, no, I don't want my reminders. Go to the plucked top folder, go to harps subfolder, and then click on it. And I will show you how this works. I have this here. Uh, I just have a s default Omnisphere patch just so you can see this actual top folder. And then once you have that, go in here, click that, and then it will load up. In this case, it will load up an empty instance of Omnisphere, right? Because that's the only one I actually added so far. And then you can start to play it. Because what you don't want, it, you don't want to ever have to go here search for audio unit instruments go to spectrasonics go to omnisphere and click there why would you want to do that it's so frustrating oh Wesley, it's 32 gigabytes of ram uh, i have not yet tested how many instruments i can add but what from what i read online uh, after this new release is that somehow their RAM is more integrated with the CPU if you get super technical so you don't need as much RAM as you would in the old Intel Max um, if that makes sense it will load it into like a swap file that is super fast um, I've seen some composers on YouTube testing out like 16 gigabytes and I was amazed at how many instruments they, I mean big orchestral instruments libraries they could actually add in the template. So Wesley and everyone else, uh, I yeah I have the new Apple Silicon M1 Pro machine. So it's not Intel. So where was I going with this? Yeah, uh, I, I think this is more optimized, at least in logic, so you can have more instruments in your template. And now, Wesley, I was going to say this. What I am going to build is most composers, at least the most composers I know, have this massive template with thousands of instruments inside it. Right? I, I'm sure you have worked this way too. I have in the past. I want to get away from that. I want to have less instruments in the actual... When I start the project, I don't want to have thousands of instruments. I'd rather have less, but, you know, cover the full range, like, or cover the brads, the winds, the reeds, uh, all of these categories. Like, I want to cover it, but then when I need it, I just, uh, let's say I have a harp here. Let's say this is a harp. I want to be able to go into the user patches, but, uh, but change it out. Let's say I'm not happy with that harp, but I'm still wanting a plucked string type of instrument. Let's try a koto instead. I want to be able to go, and then it will, uh, if I have a harp here, it will load up the harp category here automatically when I select it. Right? Then I want another subfolder like koto. Let's try a koto. Okay, I'm not happy with that. I want to try, uh, let's say, where were we? A, a, a Scyther, and so on. So you can quickly and super fast, like, uh, uh, change out and load instruments on the go as you build your project. That's, um, that's what I want to do this year. So it's a complete new approach uh, of a template. And by the way, <laughs> when I start to build the actual template, some uh, day soon, pro might be tomorrow, when I made this categorization, start to build the template. I will build it in a very different way from also... Oh, I always... That's typical me. I always do things differently from everyone else. Probably uh, hurting from it because I have no one to really ask because I, I go my own... I'm like that old poem. I take the, the, lo the row... Uh, what's it say? The road less traveled by. Always in my life. <laughs> Everything I do, I do things my own way. So, uh, you will learn about how I build my master template uh, 
in a later stream. But for now, I start with the categorization for every t different type of instrument. So what I still have left is the drums and all the non-acoustic instrument. Let's call them... In fact, let's call them elect electronic? Let's call them electronic. Electronic. Ah, I can't spell. Electronic. Because since... What else is electronic? Like, I think I will put electromechanical instruments in here as well. So, I, th I believe isn't... Let's see. Google. Let's get back here again. Isn't Mellotron a electromechanical instrument? Yeah. I th I'm still contemplating if I should put... If I should put s these types of instruments into the keyboard category, which I have at the top here, or almost at the top. Or if I should put it is it so in its own like electronic category? Synthesizer. Let's see. Tateshi. Uh, Google Shamisen, the coolest fret instrument. I somehow forgot to mention. Oh, Shamisen. I heard about it. But now I want to know how it looks. Shamisen. You know what? I think YouTube was better for this. Sound example. If people could just post sound examples. Don't want an interaction, just want to hear it. Wow! What an unusual... It's like they... It's like a big, super big pick type that you slam on the strings. Is that, is that the normal way to play this? Shamisen. It seems that you... I don't think there are any sample libraries covering this instrument, to be honest. Probably, now that I think about it, that's why I re uh, removed the fretless, because... I don't know if you can really do the fretless instrument as a sample library, because how do you sample... You know, the glissando, or the gliding in between the notes. How do you sample that? I don't think it's possible unless they do like a mathematical modeled instrument. Um, I agree, Tateshi. I love these types of fretless string instruments. I probably will have to be... F I will be forced into learning at least playing one of them eventually. Just because... Uh, I mean, Wesley or Tateshi, since you're here in the chat, or MVM, do you personally own or use any sample library that can play fretless in a good way? That sounds good. Because I, I don't think I have anyone. I mean, I have... I have fretless strings, but they don't sound as I want them to sound. I have an ear who, for example, that's actually a bowed fretless. Um, in, I think it's called Jade uh, Orchestral Jade by Stress of Sampling. But, I mean, it doesn't really get that emotion and expression that it a true solo performance of the acoustic instrument can get. If you if you own anyone and like it, please let me know in the comments. Like a fretless plucked string instrument, like the ones we talked about. Let's actually. I think I will start with this one. Let's see, Wesley. Other than two fretless basses, not effectively. Is that, do you play fretless, do you mean you play fretless bass um, yourself, or are, are you talking about fretless bass sample libraries now? Let's see, MBM, no, but I agree with you, I don't think it's possible, maybe it could be faked with the pitch wheel, I, I actually do that right now, but it always so end up sounding synthy and you know, uh, sometimes I, I, I add vibrato with the pitch wheel uh, on instruments that you know, if you press with the key, you cannot do the vibrato. Uh, I mean, some people use, uh, you know, the rolly C board and then they do vibrato. On some instruments, you can get away with it, like electric guitar. 
can sound pretty decent, but Fret the sample libraries. Uh, let's see, raw East West has a few. Oh, I have to check this. Raw by East West. Let's see what they include in here. That might be a, a lot. I I I have the East West collection, so I should probably be able to install these instruments. Let's see. I guess let's to Far East. Here they have the Shamisen. They have the Erhu. Do this sound good, Wesley? I mean, really expressive. But because the Erhu is probably my favorite high pitched solo string instrument in the world. It has such a beautiful expressive uh, range because it is fretless. Um, you. Uh, I don't know how you're going to be able to do this in the sample library, to be honest. Maybe using a logic remote on pitch mode. I, I haven't tried that. I actually got this. Let me show you if I can. This one here. I don't know if you can see this. Probably not. It's a ring that sends via Bluetooth. I put it on my finger like this. Let's see if this work works now. Uh, it's connected to a little device here, so I can do pitch bend vibrato by wiggling my finger, which is like every pianist's secret dream is to be able to do vibrato. Let, let's see, if I just t do the piano here, so of course, piano doesn't have vibrato, right? But if I use this ring, you cannot see the keyboard, but if I just wiggle my fingers like this, I can actually do vibrato on any instrument. It's it's sending pitch bend uh, modulation data. And then of course you need to go into the instrument and set the pitch bend range probably to like a half step or something so you can I, otherwise it gets too grainy and too uh, vast of the pitch bend. Let's see Wesley, you have used them for effect for soloing? No. I would say this goes for all, especially for all fretless instruments and all instruments that can play true glissando, if, if you know what I mean. So fretless, both bowed and plucked strings, uh, trombones, all, all, you know, every instrument that is, that you can do, do proper glissando, in my opinion, those, those are the hardest ones to create sample libraries for. Um, so, I mean, solo violin. I mean, there is no real good sample library or, you know, model instrument that sounds really good. As, I mean, really, really authentic yet. Uh, some instruments, plucked instruments and uh, percussive instruments particularly, I cannot really hear. I cannot hear the difference between a good sample library, you know, piano and a recording. This goes for drums, this goes for all percussion basically. And uh, But some instruments, we talked about this, Wes, you mentioned saxophones, even though it's not really a true glissando instrument, it, it just has too much expressive capabilities that is impossible to to do sam a really nice sample library on, in my opinion. Wow, did you like my uh, MIDI vibrato ring? You can actually do, uh, it's really cool because it has uh, uh, some kind of accelerometer, accelerometer, is that the word? So I can do, you can set it on vibrato on if you wiggle, and then if you do it like this, uh, tilting in the other direction, you can send other MIDI CC data so for example do dynamic swells on it it's really hard to control but it's really fun as well more fun in my opinion than just you know faders over here let me try that link oh good you can you can actually post links i don't know what happened now we tried to open it in uh, safari something went wrong and now I lost the chat. Where did you guys go? I shouldn't have clicked that link. Let's copy the link and try. Thank you for the link, by the way, Wesley. I assume this is an, an example of raw. 
something went wrong. Did you really get the proper link? I copy pasted it in here. Let's see. Somehow it includes studio. Let's remove that. Okay. Let's see what. Uh, my name is Wesley the Second, and he just went to see one of my movies. Actually, yeah, yeah. the end of fretless instruments. I need to. Yeah. Which uh? I need you to which instrument is this, Wesley? To pretend you're conducting an orchestra. No. You and what are? That's it. Okay. Very, very short, um, almost muted sound, but still a fretless string. Uh, which was, which one was that, uh, Wesley? Let's keep background music going again. Tatasha, yeah, it really needs practice. Vibrato comes naturally. I would say vibrato, wiggling your finger like this or your hand. Is the most natural way to do the vibrato on uh, because it's what you do on a violin for example o of course this is this your left hand in that case but uh, it's fairly natural um i mean probably the most natural for me is though uh, since i i started playing uh, woodwinds is doing vibrato with your breath um, so, I mean, I have that as well. I, I don't think... Have I connected my... I have this breath controller, which I can really recommend. Uh, that way you can add... If you want to add um, vibrato on breath. Some people use the breath control for dynamics. But you could set it so it sends CC2, for example. And then map CC2 to vibrato strength. In many sample libraries you can actually vary the degree of vibrato with the, the CC. That was four years ago. I'm sure it is a plucked koto, but being away from my system is somewhat uh, airheaded. I'm getting a bit airheaded by just from the mind chaos of all this categorization. Uh, let's try to, to finish this. I think this was the last category and I will do drums later. I mean, did I forget something? Tune percussion, here goes marimba and all basically struck instruments like tuned, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Membranophones. <laughs> uh, goes in here. Then all the keyboard based instruments, strings, brass, winds, reeds, reeds which are free, which you don't do in bullshit with your mouth, fretted strings, plucked strings which uh, are non-fretted all voices and then electronic handpan oh yeah nice suggestion i love hand i love all types of is that the proper uh, top categorization handpan because there are steel drums handpans i want to have um, i want to have like the top category so i can use subcategories for it Let's. I, I, I want to try hand pan music instrument. Let's see what it is classified as. Hand pan music instrument. No. Steel pan. No, that's. Tune percussion. I, exactly. But what? Are there vari Aren't there variations of this? And where where would that go in tune percussion? I I I, I would put it here because I think it can play hand pans. Let me see. Hand pan is that one word? I always get confused with this in English because sometimes you in English like to separate words into two. In Swedish, we always keep everything as one word. You, there's even like people who do it like this. In, if you talk about the Swedish word, like um, people get annoyed, like this is the wrong way to spell things in Swedish. Every double word is like one word like that. 
Okay, that was a rambling tangent, sometimes called hang. What's that? Hang drums. Hang drums. Isn't that? Hang drum. Hang drum. Yeah, hang. Hang drum. Is a type of music called handpan. Okay, so that is the proper name. Uh, what's the range? The, com the most common range for the handpan. Steel pan. Hang. Let's put it here. I think that. Handpan. Let's put it. Okay, so that's one word in English. Let's put it below tubular bells just because it has that metallic sound for tune percussion. Where will you put theremin? If you find a theremin sample library that actually sounds good, I salute you, Teteshi, because I think you will never find one. And I will pro. What was it? It was a new soundtrack that actually used theremin as one of the main instruments. What is it? Was it in the uh, the Marvel Loki uh, TV series? I haven't seen it, but I think I read somewhere that they used a theremin as one of the main instruments uh, inside that soundtrack, which is like, what? Who uses theremin? <laughs> Unless you're doing like 70s uh, horror music or something, you know, spooky music. music. Uh, let's see. Loki, yeah. Have you seen it? And ha Have you he heard the song? Who made that soundtrack, by the way? I always want to know. Loki soundtrack. Loki soundtrack. Why can't it just put it on there? Composer Natalie Holt. Sound Iron has a library that is a theremin. Oh, really? That sounds good or crazy bad. I I, I would imagine that actually uh, you could probably do a theremin as a plug-in, like like a synthesizer, because it has kind of a synth sound anyway. So instead of doing a sample library, it would probably be better to do it as a model, physical modeling based instrument. Uh, Wesley, do you know what the very first musical instrument built on Earth by Jub Jubal is? Very first musical instrument. I'm, I, that it was not percussion, I guess, because percussion, I assume, was the. You just bang something and you have uh, an instrument. Bang two rocks together and that's a, a musical instrument. Let's see. The shekere. Now I. I'm very intrigued. What is this? Okay, so it's a shaker. They put it as a kabasa. Okay, so a shaker. That makes sense, actually. If if we're talking about percussion. Yeah, I mean, put some seeds in a container and shake it. Such a simple thing. And you know what? That's why I bought. A, let's see. Do I have? Do I only have one shaker so far? Well, a sh uh, tambourine is a shaker, but for some reason, this little container that has built in some, I don't know if it's seeds or grains of sand or something, this is also an instrument that's so simple, but so hard to make a good sample library of. Why? Well, because when you shake something, you will have like a latency, a delay before it hits the end here. So you cannot really sync this up in a DAW and quantize it because uh, it's like doing legato strings. You you need that pre pre hit if that's a pre note. So that's why I bought this. I would probably buy, but actually I, I looked at the. I think I have a Cabasa uh, Wesley in my uh, wish list on the music store. I buy all my instruments. In. So, uh, because it's it may sound simple, but it's super hard to do with sample libraries and plugins. All these stuff that has either you need that uh, pre-time before the hit, the sync, 
part of the sound, which is why legato is also so hard to do well. Uh, it's only like these past few years that sample libraries made really good legato. To, in my opinion, I may be like I, I, I'm such a perfectionist that I I hear hear all the faults because to me it's like I mean let, let me show you what I mean. And by the way, Wesley, since you were, uh, since you also remember, you know, the analog era of music, you will probably agree with me here. Pre-note, I don't know if that's the word. Round robin, exactly. So, I mean, uh, the problem with men's, men, most sample libraries is, let's assume this is a fretted, uh, fretless uh, stringed instrument. So if I go from this note to, let's say, this. Well, on a violin, for example, when you do legato, is when you glide in between. Instead of you glide like that, of course you hear the frets now because this is a fretted instrument. But when you do legato, if you do it very slowly, it's called portamento or glissando. But with legato, there's not only one legato. That was the problem for many years that uh, they only included like one speed of of glide if that if you know what i mean like but imagine this this is think analog it's not only 16 bits audio analog is pure like infinite variations in between there's there it's like um, whoops my screen is shutting down uh, it's like the number pi, pi in mathematics there is an infinite number uh, of decimals, right? It's like a circle in nature. Uh, so, in in the best of worlds, you would be able to do legato that has infinite number of speeds, and not only speeds, but because you can actually do legato where you start uh, fast. Like and then, and then slow things down the uh, the speed of your glide down. So there's actually two aspects: the time where when you start the first note and when you actually hit the second note, then the goal time. But also the curve, for, uh, so you can go straight at the straight time, or you can accelerate and deaccelerate in various ways to shape the legato. And this is why acoustic instruments are still so much better uh, than sample libraries. Because you, you cannot record a gazillion different variations of all these curves and times of legato. Uh, exactly, Wesley. So at least now, in just the past year, I just got recently, um, uh, what's it called, Cinematic Studio Strings. And of course, they don't have infinite variations, but at least they have like fast legato, legato time, medium legato time, slow legato time, and portamento. At least they have that. So we are getting closer to more variation in legato. Because let's say, let's face it, there's three main aspects of expression in, for example, strings. To get that emotional variation, is the uh, legato, meaning the transition between the notes. Uh, dynamics, meaning the intensity curve shaped over time. And uh, vibrato, meaning the strength, depth of vibrato, as well as speed of vibrato. I mean, let me show you this, by the way. I'm just wanting you to get a sense of wha what I'm thinking about musically. And why I started playing uh, uh, instruments like this. So if we take this flute. I mean, oh, let's add some vibrato. Let's see if I can, I don't hear myself here in the speakers. So if I do a vibrato, that's a straight note. You can do vibrato as uh, the speed, meaning how fast the pulses are. Or slow. You can vary the speed over the duration of the note. So going from slow to fast. You can also vary the depth of vibrato, not so much on a tin whistle, but on, uh, let's say, a saxophone or, or a 
concert flute, which has more dynamic range, you can do uh, vary the strength of the vibrato. And there's of course all these fancy Italian names like molto vibrato, vibrato and so on. I don't really use those Italian names. I, it's, that, it's just light, medium or strong vibrato. Uh, I haven't learned all those proper names. Uh, it's very distracting when I'm playing live. Okay, so should I mute? We have we have just had a like two hour discussion, so I just wanted some background music, like that. So sorry about that, Mark. Of course I will. Uh, it's just that this entire stream we have been focusing on building this instrument categorization, and now I started rambling about why sample libraries are so inferior still to this day compared to acoustic instruments, because. There's three emotional aspects of music in to, to me, this is, this is my own opinion, that shape the expression uh, that makes them, you know, makes you feel that emotion. And all three are based on some kind of movement over time, what I call curves. Dynamic curves, the dynamics from PPP to F and back to P or whatever, you can shape that curve in however many ways you want. And there's infinite variations on acoustic instruments, let's say a violin or a cello, for how you shape that dynamics, dynamic curve over time. The second one uh, is um, vibrato curve, strength, depth and speed of that curve over time. And the th third one is something you cannot do on all instruments, like uh, it's the legato, the, the speed of the legato, and the the curve, the acceleration and deacceleration over time between the first note and the second note. So I would actually uh, make a point that emotion is music is very much like in uh, nature. Everything is based on movement and motion. It's like the opposite of static. Uh, and everything has a built-in motion. If you watch someone dance, it's all about acceleration and deacceleration of various movements. That's emotion to me, at least in music. And and that is why the solo instruments are more expressive than compared to, for example, what you can do on a key piano or keyboard, because you can shape, you can change the dynamics for every note, but you cannot alter a no. Uh, not legato, not vibrato, or not dynamics over one note's du duration. So you have to, like, you can play things from the PPP, like, and do harder, like, uh, fortissimo, stuff like that. But that is over the duration of the part. Okay, so that was a complete ramble. I'm sorry about that. I just had to get that out there. My own thoughts about expressiveness in various instruments and instrument types. Uh, let's see, do you have some comments here? Uh, Mark, yeah, no, I, I'm sorry. Of course you should be able to hear if I demonstrate something. It's just that I'm uh, actually still fairly new to live streaming and it's so much to keep track of. I mean, I have two monitors separated into different windows and stuff. So please just let me know if there's some technical things uh, not working or if I get off track. Uh, let's see. MVM sample libraries may be inferior, but they really expand our available sound palette. Absolutely. I mean, I have no illusions of being able to any time play myself every instrument in the world. I, I, it's impossible. But I have personally found a passion for playing acoustic instruments because of the that infinite gradients of legato, of vibrato, and dynamics. And at least I want to have uh, a couple of variations of instruments to add to my otherwise, you know, VST and sample library compositions. Uh, let's see, Wesley, what did you say? Libraries are excellent for scoring films in the community, and a serious pro can fool the ear, but there are expressive boundaries that a live orchestra can leap over with a flick of a... Uh, yeah, I, I, agree, I agree, I agree. I mean... I mean, I start, the, let's, let's be honest, the, the Irish tin whistle is a very simple instrument. It's, it's diatonic, it's fairly easy to learn, 
but there is no uh, Tin Whistle library that can do what I can do only after... I played it since March last year, about 500 hours of practice time in total, so I went all in, basically. And I already feel that I will never use a, an Irish Tin Whistle sample library, ever again, because it, it doesn't even come close. I think when I uh, learn electric guitar, I will be... I will be thinking the same thing. And I assume this is the thing. If you play the violin, you will probably feel when you hear a solo violin sample library that, okay, that's pretty static. That's only one articulation. I mean, with the real violin, listen to, if you're into like, I listen to lots of like popular music uh, violinists. But let's take a classical one like... Uh, the uh, Chindler's List solo violin melody. There is no sample library that can play that expressive. It, it's impossible. Oh, thank you, Mark. Nice to hear. Um, so, uh, what did we do here? We uh, we got on a ramble. Uh, I'm still finishing up this instrument categorization, which I will use as kind of a cheat sheet for creating my instrument library in logic so this is just you know the instrument user patches this is what i will use um, as the foundation for that let's see mark uh, i'm an acoustic piano player and you are right even an acoustic piano as limited as piano forte is uh, uh, oh you use the <laughs> proper name no one really does that anymore it's like violoncello no one says that either it is still more expressive than a sample gun every acoustic instrument but the more solo express uh, expressive uh, you know the solo instruments the monophonic solo instruments that has control over legato vibrato and dynamic curves over time over where you can play one single... It's like you heard the Hans Zimmer says something about this where in his masterclass. Like, there's two notes in the Batman uh, soundtrack. Uh, but you can add so much expression into two single notes. Right? And he he's right about that. If you can shape the vibrato, the dynamics, and the legato over time. Over, as a curve. You can take two single notes on a French horn, for example, and you have infinite variations of it. And if we're talking about like plucked strings, let's say a guitar. Uh, if, I, if I take... Uh, I don't have an electric guitar. I will actually buy one very soon. But let me just do something like this. Timing is everything. Uh, exactly, Wesley. So if I play... Let's say, let's say see my play... Let's say I play a... Where are we? Let's say this is a power chord on electric guitar. Okay, so, okay, of course, you, you have infinite variations of how much force you, you, you push with your palm to create the palm mute, all the way to complete the open. So, infinite variations. So, there is not enough to have a sample library that has, like, palm mute light and then they go to velocity let's say 40 and then you you open up a bit more you know uh, so even as something as simple as uh, uh, and, you, and you mentioned piano and this is the same for piano as well like you have with midi you, you, you have 127 velocity layers but in most cases most sample library pianos might have like Let's say, I don't even know. Let's say they have 10 or 15 dynamic layers. In real life, a piano forte has infinite, infinite gradients and gradations on each key. So if you press the same key here, at the same force, in a real, with a real piano, you will get slightly different sound every time single time and that's not even accounting for all the randomizations of you know how nature works you can never get if you press a piano key and record every single note like this every single note on your real piano and then you record it every single waveform that you end up with will be different it's like snowflakes 
it there everyone is unique so i i remember when i had a band with a friend we made we made a, a mix of you know heavy metal with electronic synths and stuff and he played a 16th note chug pattern like you know this pawn muted i cannot even do it but you know where something like okay so i i'm still super bad at this rhythmic stuff but something like that and i tried it with sample libraries just playing chugs on a metal guitar like that you know pawn muted chugs in 16th notes and it doesn't even compare his live performance when he recorded the audio with a real electric guitar because an electric guitar is still uh, acoustic based it's based on acoustic strings it is electro acoustic i guess you could say even such a simple thing as 16th note chugs i cannot do it as good on a sample library so I don't know if I'm a perfectionist and just hear all these faults with sample libraries. But uh, that's the reason I started to go on this new journey of mine, learning real instruments after playing on the keyboard for 20 years. The Irish tin whistles in soprano, alto and low whistle range, the Native American flutes. They might be fairly simple instruments, but even a simple instrument played with expression and emotion will always add so much more to your uh, otherwise you know complete digital vst based uh, music productions uh let's see what wesley what did you say here yeah mark uh you yes you cannot beat it's like Perlman on, on now i mean i would even go further than that mark i i would even say that a let's say mediocre to average violinist so that plays in a let's say uh i don't even know if it's a thing like a student orchestra let's say um that can play that the lead solo violinist in a student orchestra is still so much better to my ears because you get that human expression and emotion and every gradient compared to the most professional super mega sample library solo sample library let's say cinematic studio solo strings it doesn't even compare to a student uh, violinist in my opinion so you don't even have to go to the highest you know most professional violinist ever uh Tateshi, I respect your attitude towards instruments. Yeah, I mean, I have realized this more and more over the years. I just took way too long to start my own journey. I want to hear, does anyone of you actually play uh, any acoustic instrument at all? Uh, if you uh, if you not count the piano. Exactly, yeah. You don't need... You don't need... I p to be to sample library you don't need it i don't know if you misspell there um let's see what did uh, wesley wrote should i should I, what do you think my it's my fifth live stream or something when i don't do anything or demonstrate anything do you prefer having some kind of background chill out background music in the stream or is it better to just keep it clean uh and you know have it silent in the background. Ithak, Itzak, Ithak. I don't know actually. Itzak? I think it's Itzak. Um, but at this time, we really have absolutely fantastic capabilities with libraries. We, we have got better sample libraries, but I have always missed that true. Uh, freedom complete freedom over these curves that i mentioned like the vibrato curve like i said i mean when you do vibrato like i just demonstrated i'm playing piano instead of the background music okay so you can have your own background music i guess i just feel that if if it's completely silent especially if i just sit here and think like what should i like next like that people will drop out because it's it gets boring like I just mentioned, even doing um, vibrato curves, like from slow to to fast vibrato, like that, or 
if we're talking about glides, I, I cannot do glides, but I can do bends. So if you bend into a note on a open hole flute, I will, I, by the way, I actually intend to get a concert flute, the standard a silver flute this year as well, the side blown, you know, orchestral flute. But I'm thinking I should probably do the buy the open hold version of that immediately because I am very fond of being able to bend in and out from notes uh, like this. So. Oops, sorry. Then you can even, even do finger vibrato like that. And you can, of, of course, do slide the timing and curve of how you slide into a note will be different as well. Every single note. You can even try to slide by opening slowly each note like this, making a quasi glissando thing. Super hard to time, but it is possible on open hold instruments like that. All right. Okay, so uh, you are in Sweden now. I am in Sweden, and it's uh, 4 p.m. here. Starting to get dark. The downside of these northern countries, Wesley, is that the sun sets in the winter super early. And if you live far enough north, it's like the sun doesn't even rise in the winter months, which I would get like crazy. I, I usually get a bit of winter with or November blues, like I get a bit depressed from all this darkness. Where are you guys at, by the way? I, uh, I think you mentioned it, Tatesha. I, I don't remember where, w which country. Wesley, West Virginia, 10 a.m. Uh, 10 a.m. So that's six hours. I'm super bad at, especially at U.S. geography. Uh, but if it's six hours, I know it's the east eastern part of the U.S. because you have like six hour difference from Sweden. Sweden is Central European time. Uh, let's say uh, Tateshi, Japan. Let's. What is that? Tateshi. Uh, no, Mark. This message has been held for review. Show. Error. Try again. I don't know why why YouTube did that. Sorry, Mark. Message retracted. I don't know what happened in the chat here. I, I'm still getting used to this YouTube live streaming thing. L let's see. Uh, synthesizers. Should I put that at keyboard? keys electromechanical I, I'm gonna check this e electro mechanical mechanical music instruments I want to see how many there are actually electric piano electric guitar Hammond organs I could put those in electric keys of course electric bass magnetic tape so only probably Mellotron. I, I would probably put that in electric keys as well. Then I might not even need an electronic category, to be honest. Let's see. Mark, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to solve this. When your message, it says message is held for review. Then I get two buttons. I can actually see your message here. I get a message that says show and hide. I'm trying to press show now. Error. Try again. I I don't know why it gets that. And then it says message retracted now. Uh, Mark. But you know what? Can I just like if I click on you? There's no way to put you as like a trusted user. I assume YouTube has like some automatic system to hold comments for review. Uh, clavichord. I'm gonna check that now. Clavichord. Uh, 
Clavichord is a Western European stringed rectangular keyboard instrument. Clavichord. Didn't I put in that keyboard? I did not. How common is that clavichord? I don't think I ever used a clavichord. I like I actually like harpsichord. I know some people hate them, but they have such an evil sounding, you know, aristocratic evilness about them to me. I, I like to use them for portraying this, you know evil but royal, if that makes sense. Or regal. Uh, so, Mark, I, 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 I'm not sure how to solve that. I, I've seen your message twice. I tried to, to approve it twice. It could be a glitch on YouTube chat. I assume they have some auto, like it's there's some word. Let's see. Sorry about that. I was trying to post a link to my video about 10 levels of piano pedaling. Okay, so then we know that YouTube doesn't allow links. Uh, at least not standard. You know what, Mark? You have been so nice, so I will make you a moderator now. You are now a moderator on uh, my live streams. Uh, now, I think you should be able to post that link si since the, you know, the automatic review system doesn't seem to get triggered if you are a moderator. Try to post the link again, uh, Mark. Johann Sebastian Bach's favorite instrument, the clavichord. Wow! He really loved gentle and soft music. Now I need to check, do I actually have a clavichord in, let's say, let's try Keyscape. Wesley, do you, do you know a clavichord uh, sample library that I might have in my collection? What did I do here? Om Omnisphere. Does Omnisphere has this clavichord? Clavinet. There it is, clavichord. So this is in a keyscape. It sounds like this. By the way, this sounds to my ears similar to similar to a harpsichord in that you get that you know spike in the attack, like a spike piano. I always thought of this as harpsichord and these types of keyboard instruments as a mix of a plucked instruments like a guitar and a piano keyboard that is struck with felt uh, mallets, you know, uh, if you know the insides of a piano. Uh, so you get a bit of sharper attack. Interesting. I will put that uh, into there as well. Did I, did I actually add it? Uh, clavichord, yeah above harpsichord. Not all this there from me as to the sample library. Oh, so I found it now. Uh, Keyscape, which is actually my favorite keyboard collection instrument. Clavichord has the sustain that the harpsichord does not. Let me compare if I have a harps, good harpsichord in here as well. I don't remember if Keyscape has it. Harpsichord. No, yeah, they had it electric harpsichord which i find like why and they have this 12 string harpsichord in omnisphere okay it's a metal hammer one of the first oh uh, are you talking about the um clavichord it's a metal hammer i guess that's why it has that spiky attack to to my ears uh Let's see, there, I think, Wesley, isn't there also an instrument, because we always think about piano type instruments, like I, I consider the harpsichord and this clavichord in the piano category, but I believe there are pianos that looks like pianos on the outside, so you have the, you know, this resonant body, but it's made up almost more uh, as a mallet instrument on the inside, so long plates instead of strings. I just cannot remember the name. I know I've seen uh, one of those instruments and heard it, but if you have a clue about what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments. 
let's see what else. Toronto, Mark from Toronto. Uh, let's see. I want to I want to hear is that your example? Copy link. Let's put it up on YouTube and see. I hope I won't get like triggered for some copyright thing if I play these examples live. So I'm uh, Mark Eisenman and I'm going to just talk about a little exercise I learned many years ago. Yeah, you're going to talk about pedals. That's a thing. <laughs> okay, sorry to interrupt your video, Mark, but let me show you. Let me show you. I just got this. I haven't connected it yet. This is a, a sustained pedal that is just a switch. Why did I buy this? Because I, I have read that it is built like a tank and works really well. I have had three different sustain pedals, you know, that looks like an actual pedal connected with, a, you know, this uh, socket into my MIDI keyboard and they all failed. They started to like get stuck. So I press the pedal and then release the pedal and then it's still stuck. And, you know, I could spend like 10 different um, recordings trying to record a piano part in my uh, DAW and then the recording gets destroyed because the sustain pedal CC gets stuck. I got so mad eventually that I just thought, well, just, then just buy one of these. I think this is mainly used as a guitar pedal uh, switcher, on and off. There's no half pedaling going on here. It's just on and off. Just because I read people had this on stage for 15 years and it never failed them. Compare that to what I assume we will hear this about in this video. We're on an actual acoustic piano. Again, gradients. Uh, there's no, I mean, uh, you have a gradient with, with a pedal off or on. Go from my jazz piano teacher. And it has to do with how to use the damper pedal. pedal. Oh, you're going to talk about the damper pedal. I, th I thought you were going to talk about the sustain. Or actually how to the, by the way do any sample libraries piano sample libraries actually have true damper pedals uh, I'm not sure about that learn how to use the full range of the pedal and it's a really simple exercise and it's great to do especially if you're Let me fast forward continuous. For a bit so, so I can hear let's see nice video demonstration with your I'm going to change the note to C, maybe, because I don't know if it can be seen. Let's see. So let's do a C, and I'll do the same thing. Oh. Let's see. Mark, unfortunately, there's some sync issues. Yeah, but... uh, I, I totally agree. Uh, I, I won't play the entire video, but, I mean, uh, people could check this out, perhaps, uh, since you posted the, the link in the chat. But I agree with you that on an acoustic piano, there's also that. I forgot to mention that regarding expressive capabilities on acoustic instruments. Pedaling, both sustain and damper pedal, uh, you, you, can do, you can do so much on a real acoustic piano that it's... I mean, how do you sample... How do you sample that? I mean, the closest thing I've got personally as a true infinite dynamics but it's still not quite there yet but uh, it's called uh, it's actually made on mathematics do you have this mark if you play acoustic piano i would like to hear your opinion about this, this is called piano tech 7 pro it, it is like uh, a completely synthesized model acoustic modeling trying to get that sound of the piano with all the infinite mechanics and variations of dynamics and so on. I mean, of course, even if you have a superb... Um, let's say this could model it completely, even to your ears, Mark. Let's say it can, this plug-in, right? Well, what about input? We have that problem as well. I talked about this with my friend David a lot of times. Like, the one of the main problems for us composers that compose for software instruments is how do we input all that expression? 
Because first you only have 127 um, uh, velocity values. Next, the actual MIDI keyboard. I have a Studio Logic Fatar Fatar keybed. It's up there in range, high range quality, but still, it's no way near true infinite variations of uh, dynamics as a real acoustic piano has. So there's that. There's also how do you uh, add the expression MIDI data, like faders and all this stuff, CC faders. I mean, it's better than nothing, but compare that to, I don't have a, uh, well, if you take the bold uh, instrument, uh, like, like compare that with actually having infinite gradations of dynamics by how much force you put into the bow stroke. Uh, Jeff, welcome to the stream. Uh, I, I guess we are uh, at the later part now. We are just rambling now. We, we, we built the entire structure. Now we are rambling about sample libraries and what you can do and what you cannot do with them. Let's see, Mark, it's so very, it's very long, so I would not expect you to play it here. However, it's worth checking out on headphones. I always check out everything on headphones because my acoustics in my tiny studio is so bad. I hardly compose with uh, studio monitors anymore, to be honest. Uh, you can hear the actual amazing sounds when the dampers just start to touch the strings. Infinite sound on one note. Nice. Uh, yeah, exactly. So we have two... It, it's a twofold problem. First, you there's literally no way to get all the infinite grad gradations of expressivity you can get on acoustic instruments in the sample library. And second, we don't really have any proper way to get infinite variations on the MIDI in to control those software instruments. So all that in all, uh, if you add that up, recording an acoustic instrument with an actual microphone, even with super simple rhythmic stuff, uh, will sound so much more human uh, with all that variation you get naturally. What is better than rambling about sample libraries? We have rambled a lot about actual instruments as well, Jeff, because I made this entire instrument type structure based on my own kind of thinking. Let me just go through it one final ta time here. So the top categories will be I have drums here, I will make that later, but tune percussion, all the bass uh, keyboard instruments, uh, I just uh, shortened it into keys, like pipe organ, pianos, electric keys, celeste and so on. All the various strings, which are bowed strings, at least the natural way to play them, like the orchestral strings and stuff. All the various brass instruments, winds, where I exclude the reeds, so no oboes or clarinets in here, and then I so ma mainly flutes. Then I added a, a category for all the proper reeds, which are saxophones and everything, every reed instrument that you actually use embouchure on. Then I call it another category reeds, which I call free, which is the the air is free on the way to the reed, so there's no shaping it with embouchure, like accordions, concertinas, even bagpipes. And I have um, f uh, 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 string instruments that you don't play with a bow. I separate it into fretted, like uh, guitars, mandolins, and so on. But by the way, now that I think about it, oud should, should not be here, and plucked which are not fretted. Oud is, of course, a fretless instrument. So sass, lute, dulcimer, charango in the frets, and plax, which is everything from the classic harp to which I, lyre, which I call small harp. It was that version that you called, by the way, the, the Welsh instrument, uh, Jeff, um, which is also like a small harp. I could put that in there. I don't remember the name. But basically everything that you pluck and that let it ring. Um, and then finally I have voices. So mixed choirs, male choirs, children choirs, lead vocals and so on. Did I forget any like top category if we exclude now drums and percussion, pure percussion? That was it. I just didn't... I mean that name... 
who comes up with this spelling like that? Servet. Servet. Can you play the servet for me? Oh yeah, Kruth. Kruth. I just spell it how it looks. Play the Kruth for me. Jeff. <laughs> I, I just want to ask you, Jeff, and anyone else, do you think I missed any big category of instrument? Any instrument that I could not, uh, you know, put into one of these top categories? I mean, uh, if if you can come up with any any in instrument and you don't think it could be properly organized into any of these top categories, then I would probably need one more. But I cannot think of anything because I cheated a bit and created, instead of putting mallets as its own category, I, I put tune percussion. This category, top category, could become huge, to be honest, because there's so much tune percussion instruments there. I just wanted to add the most common ones to me here. What about chimes? I mean, chimes... Let's see, chime. I mean, do you play... I only use chimes as like a wind chime. Um, chimes, musical instrument. Chime, bell instrument. Wait a minute. They put it at bells. Now that I think about it, let, let's just put bells here because there's so many different bells. You can even use synth bells in there. Looks fairly complete. Thank you. Um, um, thank you, Wesley, even though my, my young years are probably behind me. I turned 40, 40 last year, born in 1981. But as they say, you can still be young in spirit, and I, I think I am, and I want to, and I want to remain so. You can be young. It's like uh, I suppose everyone knows the Swedish children books author Astrid Lindgren. Uh, I mean, she made like some of the most uh, famous children books in the world. I think the most famous one. Uh, Abroad is probably what is it called in English? Uh, Pippi Longstocking. Uh, you know, she once said, uh, stated the importance of always being, you know, keeping the child within you, even w when she was like 80 years old. Let's see, you can even have a glitch section. Tibetan singing bowls. I think. Singing bowls could be category. I, I added a category for bells, which could be gigantic as a subcategory. Uh, MVM. Singing bowls. But chimes, let me see. Yeah, I, I have to. Chimes, musical instrument. How does that work exactly? It's this, yeah. It's this. Chimes. chimes but i mean do you play do you actually play pippi yeah <laughs> i mean who hasn't watched pippi longstocking i think that's the name in english i always love those old uh, those those old children uh, shows they, they, I, I don't know if this is just me. Uh, let's not get too cynical, but I just feel, I don't know if I'm too nostalgic about my childhood. Like in, the, I, I was a child of the eighties, since I was born in nineteen eighty one. I just feel that there was more innocence and joy, and you know, yeah, innocence and joy in the old children's uh, shows like that. Let's say tuned chimes can play notes because I, I only use chimes as, you know, ring, that kind of sound. Uh, but I guess, I mean, are these tuned? I never played this. This just looks like uh, this, uh, the same tuning, basically. 
tuned chimes. Because if it's if if it's like a non-tuned chimes, uh, I would put it as uh, tuned chimes. Is there such a thing as this is tubular bells though? Oh yeah, and we have metallophone. But wait a minute, metallophone isn't that the same thing as? Let's see, am I am I am I just being completely crazy now? Xylophone. It's a bigger version, and this is a smaller version, like children version. Isn't isn't all those just? Labeled as the top category metallophones. I think so. I guess I mean tubular bells. Yeah, I think so. Because I think chimes should probably be here in the... in Like, I said drums, but I, I'm really meaning percussion. Like that. Because it's not played as a melodic instrument. Um, well, so yes, she had super strength, indeed. Wind chimes, exact exa wind chimes. I it's the same thing, right? But then there's also those, you know, wooden wind chimes that, like, uh, Native American, yeah, they put like a, a thing on your porch. Uh, metallophone is a metal xylophone, but smaller. They are widely used. Okay, so let's add that as well then. Metallophone as just above the glockenspiel so metallophone is a smaller version i guess the more children toy like sound um let's see. Ah, i mean i could probably just load up did i didn't i put the drums here i have this already prepared so let's put that in there and see if we can get something going so i put here i will put probably in the shimmer category i will add chimes like chimes, triangles and stuff. So I actually pre-prepared. We made this percussion template starting a master template in Logic a few days ago. So I started with the percussion. And here I have categorized them as bass drums, deep drums, timpani, mid-percussion, djembes, bongos, anything in that mid-range. Toms, snares, gongs, gongs and tam-tams, probably thunder plates in there as well. Sticks, all types of clicks and sticks. Shimmer. Chimes, triangles, metallic, you know, ringing, resonant sounds, and symbols, which is piatti, suspended symbols, crash symbols, you know, everything like that. Yeah, dream catchers is the word I meant for the wind chimes in in wood. Um, glockenspiel is children's word. Well, wait a minute, glockenspiel. Oh, I see. Glockenspiel is, is the children's version. Then... Then I will remove that because I already had Glockenspiel there, I think. Because it's also based it's a metallophone. Right, I think we will. I I I started to ache in my shoulders and stuff here. We have been live for three hours, so I will probably call it a day now. Uh, I'm just going to add the final one, will which will be like the drums and percussion, I will do it like this and copy paste this, I already prepare them like that. Uh, I use a section of metal in the percussion fol folder. Oh, I see. Okay, I might add that one. But um, three hours I think will be enough for this time. And probably Next time I will start to build the actual template and start to save these as presets in the Logic library. Whoa, okay. Uh, how do I close the stream? I hope I will see you guys next time. I will uh, start to add this as a schedule in YouTube. So I think you are supposed to get like a notification or something that you can press notify me when I go live if I schedule the stream. I, I think that is how it works. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Wesley, MVM, Jeff, uh, Tateshi, and everyone else. Uh, and I'll see you 
tomorrow and or whatever next time I stream. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye.